Hi, I'm Oscar Schofield and you're on Riverstone Farm. Uh, we opened the farm six years ago and we are putting up a high tunnel behind us. Uh, we found out about the EQIP program through NOFA and NRCS and we're really excited because we're going to be able to farm earlier in the year. My name is John Klein and the company is the Sunworks Corporation and it's a small family business and we build greenhouses. We've worked on greenhouses basically up and down the east coast from Maine down to uh, to uh, Texas and we've built for uh, uh, for residences, uh, we've built for uh, noted people and uh, we've done big projects uh, four or five acres and uh, we've worked at most of the schools, universities uh, up and down the east coast Ohio State, Princeton, um, Cornell, Rutgers, Delaware, Delaware State, and, and so on. The wood that you see here is for the baseboard on the, the length of the greenhouse on each side. And this is what we bolt our, our uh, eye bolts and so on to for the um, roll-up sides to, uh, to actually close onto. Uh, the other pile of wood here is for the gable ends, and that will be framed out and then covered with a single sheet of poly. Of poly. And uh, this wood over here is cypress. It's long lasting and it doesn't give off any fumes. And for organic growers, I think that's important. Some of the greenhouses I've worked on uh, have used cypress and some of them could be over a hundred years old. And when you slice into the wood, it looks like brand, brand new. So it's a, it's an everlasting wood. They used to use it all for your glass greenhouses years ago. And when they couldn't get the, the cypress, they went to redwood, which wasn't quite as good. And then of course, aluminum now. So what we have here are the, are, is the greenhouse actually going up. The ground posts, which you see down towards the end here, are actually six foot tall. They went in the ground approximately three foot. The layout on the greenhouse is very critical. For example, this here greenhouse is 30 foot wide, center to center. So it was important for us to keep the width right and make sure that the greenhouse was square. And then every four foot, we drove the posts into the ground. Here we have uh, the framework of the greenhouse. It comes in sections. Uh, the bows are in three sections, and then we have the collar tie and some struts. Now we set our, our horses up to keep everything uh, at the same plane, and then we go ahead and assemble. Now, this particular manufacturer, Rimmel Greenhouse, which is a great greenhouse, very strong, they mark out where we should put all our uh, fittings so that everything is true to the uh, final measurement that we need. And then from here, we take them over, stick them on the... Uh, the ground post that we have set, and then go ahead and, and install the ridge and purlins and whatever else is on the side. And this house will have roll up sides. And we'll do that um, after we get the frame completely up. These are the uh, assembled trusses and the uh, fellows are gonna bring them over to those ground posts that we had set. And uh, they'll, they'll just uh, put them on the ground post. There's little inserts and it connects the truss to the ground post. Now they'll lift the, uh, the truss up to go over the connector between the ground post and the truss. Randy is, is setting up to install the aluminum for the, for the roll-up sides. And these sides will open uh, when needed to let air into the greenhouse and across some cross ventilation. Now this is the aluminum track. It uh, locks down the poly from the roof in the top layer. Uh, top run and then on the bottom one uh, it'll lock down the poly that will be used on the roll-up side. But we're going to continue framing the uh, uh, the greenhouse with the ridge and the purlins and the uh, the wiggle wire base for the sides and then we'll install the uh, the baseboard down each side of the greenhouse. We'll continue by framing out each gable end and installing uh, doors or whatever else uh, they might have there. Uh, and then once everything is framed out, we'll go ahead and we'll either cover the gables first with a single layer of poly, or we'll cover the roof, which will be air inflated. And uh, we'll pull two layers over and lock it down 
install the inflation motor, and we'll be good to go. As part of the program that got us the high tunnel, we're also going to convert a lot of this backfield into a permanent pollinator zone. Um, what's really nice is the program is helping us with advisors and some support to make this happen. And we're very excited. It was great to find out about the program through NOFA. What the uh, fellows are doing today are framing out the gable lens with wood. And this is getting ready to cover it with, with plastic, a single layer of plastic which will be held on with what is called uh, staple tape, or we can put wire lock base and wire lock, uh, wiggle wire. And uh, they're gonna be doing both ends the same way. We have left an opening in the center for an eight foot by eight foot overhead door, but that's not on site yet. So we're gonna close that down so that we just have a small 30 inch wide opening there to, uh, to allow access to the greenhouse. And, um, uh, just just way too windy today to even think about covering, but it's got to be done on a calm day. We decided to uh, keep the wood up off the ground. This is not uh, treated wood. Or, this is just, um, I believe, uh, hemlock fir. And uh, we don't want it to get close to the ground so that um, uh, it doesn't rot. Uh, and that, that was the, uh, uh, the problem. If we get this, this wood wet and too close to the ground, it's... it's uh, lifespan will be greatly uh, diminished. So we decided just to keep this this framing up off the ground and we will continue uh, when we cover, take the plastic right down and bury it in the ground in front of the wood there. And then we'll, we'll of course have it um, either wire base and wiggle wire holding it there, there or we'll have staple tape. So um, uh, the, uh, the wood should last a lot longer by keeping it up off the ground. What you see on the side here is the, the baseboard for the greenhouse. And this here closes the, uh, uh, the airflow off, allows the roll-up sides to, to actually close down over the top of that and creating a, a somewhat of a seal there. The, uh, the pipe that you see there is actually part of the roll-up system. And that will be a, a, either a, a manual or a motorized system, can be either. And uh, the plastic will attach to that and as you roll the pipe, it rolls up the side of the greenhouse and giving you some ventilation there. Today we're finishing up framing the gable ends and we're applying and installing the uh, single wire lock to uh, each gable, gable rafter here. And that will be what the poly attaches to. And hopefully uh, we will catch a break with the wind. Right now it's just getting just too windy to even think about pulling the poly uh, onto the roof. but. When we do, we'll put a single layer of poly on each cable end. We'll wire lock it down and staple tape where we have to. And then we'll pull two layers of poly on the roof. Uh, the first layer will be a, a layer of infrared uh, poly. Uh, we'll pull that first and we'll install the uh, inflation kit. And then we'll pull the second layer and uh, then lock it all the way down uh, both sides at the uh, double wire lock down over both cable ends and then we'll actually come down and we'll install it uh, install the uh, the pipe on top of the the poly and install a retainer to keep the uh, uh, the poly attached to the pipe the roll-up pipe for the sides and uh, but again we are just waiting for for the wind and to uh, to uh, not be so intense as it is right now Oh, that, that pink is darker on that side.
Let's have a look from out there, guys. Looks good. Let up a little. Right there. Beautiful. Here we're good to go.